Almighty God, in a world of change, you placed eternity in our hearts and gave us power to discern good from evil. Grant us sincerity that we may seek the things that endure and that amid things vanishing and deceptive, we may see the truth steadily, follow the light faithfully, and grow even richer in that love which is the life of all people. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord, and declare his praise in the islands. Hear the reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith it shall be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. If a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, neither do men hide and light a candle, and they do not put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So let your light so shine that before men, and that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Amazing grace, how sweet sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind. probably the best-known hymn in the American songbook. 
You may be interested to know that there is a Wofford connection to that hymn. The cornerstone of the building behind me, Old Main, was put into place on July the 4th, 1851. According to the Spartanburg newspapers and their coverage of that event on that day, one of the attendees was a man named William Walker, known locally as Singing Billy Walker. He was the author of a hymnal entitled Southern Harmony. He's buried just across the street in Magnolia Cemetery. Singing Billy was the first person to take John Newton's words and place them with the tune that we just heard. The tune that has become known throughout this country and across the world. The tune that's familiar whenever it's played. So there is a Wofford connection with one of the amazing traditions of our nation and of our faith. Another tradition to which we're connected today is the tradition of the baccalaureate service. It originated back in 1432 at Oxford University. Each bachelor's degree candidate gave a sermon, not just the college chaplain, and they had to give that sermon in Latin. Now, in the early days of Wofford College, the same thing held true. Every candidate for a bachelor's degree gave a baccalaureate sermon in Latin. I bet you're glad some traditions have changed. <coughs> when higher education moved to this continent, Harvard University continued the tradition, and we follow in that same tradition here today. On that July 4th day, when the cornerstone was put into place, Dr. William Whiteman told the 4,000 people who were present on that day, including seeing Billy Walker, this. He said the college structure, which will rise in majestic proportions and elegant finish on this foundation, will combine temple and academy. It will be sacred at once to religion and to letters. It's that connection that has changed and matured across the centuries, but nevertheless remains, that we acknowledge and celebrate here today. As your chaplain, my role in this moment is to connect us with a sense of the sacred, to perhaps offer one more glimpse of grace for you, and to encourage you as you transition forward into a new phase of your life. Class of 2012, we celebrate you today. You know, some of you are Hugo babies. You were born during or a few months after Hurricane Hugo, that storm that left much of the South without electricity for many days, even weeks. <clears throat> One of your parents in a article in the state newspaper said this about his son. My son's birth was a bright light in the midst of a dark and stormy night. A large part of the world has watched you grow up, especially in the Harry Potter films. Daniel Radcliffe is one of you. When you were born, and I'm always interested in the music to which people are listening, when you were born, People were listening to Bobby Brown, to Poison. Remember, every rose has its thorn. Some of the faculty remember that, some of you too. You were listening to Paula Abdul, to Janet Jackson, to Bette Midler, and to Millie Vanilli. When you arrived on campus in 2008, you were listening to T-Pain and Lil Wayne, Chris Brown and Snoop Dogg. Lupe Fiasco and Alan Jackson. You were listening to Darius Rucker and Blake Shelton and Carrie Underwood and Coldplay and Taylor Swift. No one genre of music, no one point of view, no one set of experiences accurately encapsul encapsulates who you are. <clears throat> Now, class of 1962, we are 
honored to have you with us today. Many of you have returned because half a century ago you made important connections with the people and the place you remember as Wofford College. Think back a moment. You were listening to, and I want to watch Isley, Isley Sistrunk is our signer. I want to watch her sign this. You were listening to Tossin' and Turnin', <laughs> Patsy Klein's I Fall to Pieces, <laughs> Del Shannon's Runaway, <clears throat> and then there was Chubby Checker's The Twist, <laughs> the Isley Brothers' Twist and Shout. <laughs> Great. We have connected your two classes here today. One of the ways we've done that was in the scripture readings you heard. Jamie Arrakis is one of you, class of 2012, and his grandfather, Lloyd Hatton, is a member of the class of 1962. They're both participating in this service. Your senior year in 1962, the college dedicated a music building called the Black music building. Fifty years later to the week, the class of 2012 witnessed the dedication of the Montgomery music building. Back in 1962, the Student Christian Association held morning devotionals in Mickle Chapel every morning from 8 to 8.20. The class of 2012 participated in a year-long interfaith study that involved not only Christian, but Jewish and Muslim, Hindu and Buddhist students, and students of no faith at all. And they received national attention for their engagement of religious diversity. Our world has changed in many ways since 1962. In 1962, President Marsh appointed a committee on the superior student, and they were charged with finding out what Wofford College could do to enhance its educational program for great students. The recommendation was simple. Begin a foreign study program. During the years that the class of 2012 was here every year, Wofford has ranked in the top 10 of those programs of every college throughout the country, and just this past year, ranked second. And while you were here, class of 2012, Newsweek recognized you as one of the top service-minded campuses in the country. But that's enough of the Chamber of Commerce speech for Wofford. I'm the college preacher. And I want to offer a word from that perspective today. Jesus uses two metaphors that I'd like to leave with you. The first is, you are the salt of the earth. And that suggests, among other things, that you make the world spicy. He also says, you are the light of the world. And that invites you to consider that you have the capacity to help the world see things. Jesus' sermon declares what you already are. You are salt. You are light. A clergy colleague of mine says, you're not the honey of the earth sent to sugarcoat life's harsh realities. You're not the WD-40 of the earth sent to lubricate and smooth over life's hard edges. You're not the duct tape of the earth desperately trying to hold things together. No, you are salt, which is to say you add zip and zest. You make tasty and tangy a world that can often seem so bland, so tedious, and so tasteless. You make the world spicy. That means that you are a force to be reckoned with. You are going to make a difference. You are here to make everything more interesting, more engaging, more fascinating. Now one of the best things about salt is it doesn't take 
too much to do the trick. If you overdo it, you can ruin things. But the absence of salt renders blandness. Just a pinch makes all the difference in the world. Salty people change things. They disorder the status quo by valuing those who are left out. They care for those who suffer. They show mercy. They have integrity. They courageously stand for what they believe even when there is a clamor of voices asking them to go the other way. The college motto, in Taminatus Fulget Honoribus, true worth, it comes from Horace, the Odes and Epodes, true worth, which never knows ignoble defeat, shines with untarnished honor. It neither takes up nor lays aside the ax at the fickle mob's behest. No fickle mob for you. You stand strong. Of course, salt has to be used to make any difference. <clears throat> then we're told that we are light. Annie Dillard writes, you don't have to sit outside in the dark. However, if you want to look at the stars, you will find that darkness is necessary. You know that there is darkness in life. External darkness and internal darkness. Our world needs light. In order for light to be seen, we must be willing to go where darkness exists. We must be willing to engage darkness and walk through darkness so that in time, light can overcome it. Alexander Papaderos worked for many years trying to bring peace between the bitterly divided countries of Europe following World War II. His motivation for doing so stems from a high school or a childhood incident that was very odd. When he was a small child, one day he was walking along the poor remote village in which he lived and <clears throat> he found the pieces of a broken motorcycle mirror. He kept the largest piece and over the years he began rounding it off, smoothing it out on a stone. And he kept it in his pocket. He played with it and he allowed it to reflect light into cracks and crevices into dark places, and it became almost a game for him. <clears throat> but as he became mature, he says, he realizes that that mirror became a metaphor for his life. He says, light will shine in dark places only if I reflect it. You are light. On your first Sunday on this campus, the college bell was tolled for you. It tolled again today as you processed in, and it will toll again tomorrow morning as you graduate. Then it will be tolled once again for you in the year your life ends. You have been and will continue to be a part of this place no matter where you go, whether you scatter across the planet, or perhaps in the case of some of you, across the universe in the future. You are forever a part of Wofford College. But what matters most, of course, is how you live between the tolls. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe was one of those rare people who became known as a poet, an artist, a musician, a playwright, a historian, most anything you can imagine. He was, seemed capable of doing it. It was said that there was hardly a facet of human knowledge of which he didn't have tremendous grasp. As he lay dying in 1832, he suddenly sat upright in his bed and cried out with great poignancy, light, light, more light. And that's fitting, perhaps, because his whole existence had been dedicated to learning more and pushing back the parameters of darkness. Your four years here have been dedicated to the same. Now, we humans like to infer meaning from last words. 
Class of 62, you may remember hearing about George Gipps' last words, win one for the Gipper. Oscar Wilde's last words were supposedly, my wallpaper and I are fighting a duel to the death. One or the other of us has to go. And Wilde went before his wallpaper did. Just this year, we heard of Steve Jobs' last words. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Last words may be memorable. But what is most important is not what you say at the end, but how you live tomorrow and the next day and the day after. Miguel Unamuno, the great Spanish philosopher, was reading a biography of Goethe, and he came across the scene that I described just a moment ago. He read it and then he closed his book and very thoughtfully turned to his wife and said, <clears throat> you know, for all of his brilliance, Goethe was wrong. He was mistaken. Instead of crying for light, light, more light, what he should have asked for was warmth, warmth, more warmth. Human beings do not die of darkness. They die of cold. So my words for you. You are salt. You are light. But please remember the world needs warmth too. Be the warm people we have known you to be. And you will forever change the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom we are taught the way of truth. Bless, we pray, this Wofford class of 2012 as we finish our course of study. We thank you for those who taught and worked beside us, and all who supported us along the way. Walk with us as we move forward in life. Take away our anxiety and confusion of purpose. Strengthen our talents and skills instill in us confidence in the future. May our energies be gathered up and used for the good of all people. On behalf of the class of 2012, we would first like to thank our families, professors, and mentors who have helped us get to where we are today. We could not have done it without your unwavering support. As a token of our gratitude, the class of 2012 has two gifts to give to the school that has given so much to us. Wofford is in the process of gaining control of Evans Street, and the class of 2012 will be depositing $10,000 to go towards the construction of a gate at the top of this street. Secondly, we will be donating $1,500 to go towards the improvement of the Galleria in the newly minted Michael S. Brown Village Center. Thank you again for all the support that you all have given us over the past four years. It has been my privilege as your chaplain to offer blessings for you. I offered a blessing for you when you first arrived here as first year students. I have blessed your books and for some of you blessed your golf carts at the Terrio. I would like to leave you today with this blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice and oppression and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice and freedom and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough salt and light and warmth to give you enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world where others claim it can't be done. May the blessing of God, who creates, redeems, and sustains, be upon you and all you love this day and always. Amen.